Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Fall Fence Forum here in Worthington, Indiana. You're gonna love this. Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. Freedom, I tell you just what you can kill. I'm Luke with Farm Fence Solutions, and I want to welcome you to the 2020 Fall Fence Forum. This is day one of the shootout. We'll see you at one o'clock. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome to the Fall Fence Forum here in Worthington, Indiana with Tornado Wire and Farm Fence Solutions and we have Ryan Sloop. Ryan Sloop is with Sloop Fence and you won the fencing competition last year, right? That's correct, me and my teammate from no. North Carolina. Yep, that's Langley Fence, yep, right? Langley yep, Langley and I teamed up last year and uh, we took home victory last year and we'd like to walk through and show you some different things about what to expect this year. So let's talk about the spec for this year's contest be very similar to last year's and I'll show you this to kind of give you an example. So we're using fixed knot tornado high tensile wire. This is a 13 48 12 which is 13 horizontal line wires, a 48 inch finished height, and a 12 inch box spacing here. And then a barbed wire on top. So we're starting out with a brace of their choice and in this case it's an H brace and then we're going down this direction. It's 165 feet for the total length we're going to turn on a turn post in some fashion. We have a 15 degree turn in the fence and then we're going to continue down the line. The post spacing will be at a set interval of 12 feet or less and everything has to be stretched to tension. This year, one thing that we're doing different is there will be a splice in the middle of the fence somewhere that has to be joined together by their own choice, whether it be knots or wraps or some other form of joining the wire without a fastener. So when we get to the end of the line, do the same thing again be another box strainer or a stay assembly of some sort to support the weight of the fence. Last year the most popular style was an H brace and I'll be very curious to see what this year's style will be. So Ryan show me what made you different last year that made you win because your fence is right there right the one you built last year? That's correct so in North America this is probably 90 percent of the bracing that you're going to see is either, either an H brace assembly or some form or, or style of that. When we traveled to Scotland and England and Europe, we learned a different style last year and we brought that to the forum. And we brought it to the forum more as a uh, show and tell and a, to test it, uh, which is really what the magic of the forum is. How can we push the limits on forward progress in our industry and develop our trade further? So this is a typical American H brace. This is a seven inch by 10 foot post driven to grade. Then there's a six inch 10 foot member that's held in by galvanized pins internally and then there's another 7 by 10 on the other side and this diagonal wire counteracts the force of the fence that's being pushed or pulled that direction so the diagonal wire is the key to making this all work it locks everything together and keeps this post from moving so this is the brace we built last year this is called a rance brace um, very popular overseas in england new zealand scotland um, some of the things that are different about this brace is one, the aesthetics of it looks totally different. Two, we have a mortise and tenon joint down here where we're planting this post in, in together in a waterproof seal. And then the post dives back to the ground. And we built this to test the strength of it and it's proved to be a superior brace. So where this post comes to the ground to make contact, there's an eight foot post driven all the way in the ground, eight foot deep. And then this post makes contact subsurface, which is buried back to prevent rot. So for this style brace, there's no additional hardware needed. There's no twitch wires, there's no pins, there's no hardware needed for this. This is all timber construction, and it's put together in one solid unit. So here's the materials for the fencing competition this year. And this is the flat area, what we talked about. So over the hill is where they'll be building day two. And we'll take you there at the end of this video and show you. So what we have here are 31 posts of various sizes. Each person, you can see they're all staged up here. There are nine competitors. Each person is going to get the same amount of post, the exact same amount of wire. This is high tensile wire right here, 12 gauge high tensile. That's 14 gauge tornado wire, four inch spacing, high tensile barbed wire and this is Titan 134812 and this fence stretch will be 
at 165 feet. It's already marked and designated by these little flags right here. So that's what's happening. We're gonna have some fun. We'll toss the drone up in the air and line up all this equipment. It is extremely impressive with all these post drivers lined up out here. You guys are gonna love this. Zero kit. It is loud out here guys. These post drivers are really loud. So the time consuming part of this is pulling the wire and all the details. Really putting the post in this should be the easiest part. Now what's under the ground here is a bunch of rocks. So there used to be an old mine right here. And just under the topsoil is rock. So they're having to drill down and all these guys are hitting rock. That's why their posts aren't going in the ground very fast. So you're seeing various methods of getting these posts in the ground in the rock. Some of the guys are sharpening the tips of the posts. Some of the guys are uh, drilling out the holes, pre-drilling the holes. All sorts of different techniques that are being used. Most of the guys are pre-drilling the holes.
Hey, buddy. <laughs> this is hard ground. Pressure washer's doing no justice. This is the guy running solo by himself. He has more posts in the ground than anybody else running solo. It's amazing. That is a ProTec Evo 2 post driver. That thing is awesome. It's huge. Remember these guys from about a year, it was about six months ago? Absolutely. Yep, Nacogdoches, Texas, American Timber and Steel. <laughs> Good How are we stuff. doing, Josh? All the poster American Timber and Steel here today, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very right. proud sponsor. Glad to be a part of it. Stripping wire, we're going to try to uh, put a figure eight splice in this for a little added uh, bonus points. So we just cut a perfectly good uh, piece of a net wire fence and we're going to splice it together using figure eights. And we, I hope it works. I hope the judges like it. Tying the ends to the figure eight knot. And then I'll twist them off. That way they're nice and pretty for the judges. Sebring Joseph is my name. It came from the community that I grew up in. Uh, it originated from a gentleman there in 1897 who built our house. And he lived there all of his life. And so that is a uh, name unique just to our area, and uh, I've never heard it anywhere else. What you doing, Bojangles? Stripping. <laughs> I'm Blake Benson with Premier Far Fence out of Spencer, Indiana, and we're tying termination knots. We went well into the night last night, right? We did, got late. <laughs> so this is Ryan Sloop. Sloop Fence. Sloop Fence. Alan Olson, SWI. And these guys are the judges for, one, two of the judges. How many judges do we have? Two. Just two? two? Just yeah. you guys, okay. So the guys, these guys are the two judges of the fencing competition. Ryan builds Ag Fence in North Carolina and SWI is the largest fencing company in Wyoming, is that right? Yes, we are. Okay, and your brother runs a fencing company out of Cody and you're in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Correct. You guys build not, you, you build uh, agricultural fence and 
You build residential. Yep, we do we do anything fence. Right. And your brother's down there doing a demo right now for residential fence. Chain link, right? Yep. We're looking a lot at the overall finished product and you know the craftsmanship that went into it and just how it turned out overall. They ran into some challenges that maybe they're not used to, but you know, it's about how you adapted and overcame. Yeah. And this was really rocky soil. That's why we cut out the time limit. There was a four hour time limit originally. And it took three and a half hours just to get the post in the ground, right? Yes, at least. While the judges are out there doing their judging, we're going to look at a section of fence right here. We're going to talk about this brace. So this brace is a typical H brace. So they're looking at the quality of the H brace, the level of the, uh, the quality of H brace. They're looking at this brace wire right here. They're also looking at staples. And there's a specific way the staples are supposed to be done. Two staples up top, two staples down low, and then alternating every other line wire. Now, we're also looking at a two or three inch spacing from our barbed wire to the top of our net wire. And we're looking at staples, how far the staples were driven in. So these staples aren't driven all the way, called hard stapling, all the way to the post because this fence will flex and livestock pressure will move this fence and we don't want to stress the fence with having staples hard stapled. Now the staple sticks out just a little bit further than it should. So we want to bring it down just to where it gets enough penetration and it holds the wire in place. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. And everybody did their brace system a little bit differently. You can see this is an H brace. You can see some of these braces right here are like a dead man type brace that are buried up in the ground. And I don't know the exact terminology for it, but we'll talk about that a little bit later or in a future video. But that's what they're looking at tightness of the wire this wire could have been a little bit tighter over here it's really really tight so we know that this tornado wire can be pulled to an extreme tightness and that's what we're judging that's what they're doing right now consistency straightness of the fence and all that criteria all right everybody ready in the solo division <laughs> <laughs> working alone the champion the champion of champions Bryce Taylor, in the geezer division. <laughs> Is there any geezers? There's one geezer. Where's the other geezer? Go wake him up. There's a geezer. Come up here and get your prizes, you old geezers. You guys won the geezer division. <laughs> He's got the shortest shorts. <laughs> in third place, with 93 points out of an available 115, who put in the longest day and has the most luscious locks, Langley's Fencing. In second place, a total of 94 points out of an available 125. One point difference between second and third. The Odd Couple ties custom fencing and sticks fencing out of Paris, Kentucky. In first place, with 97 points out of a total of 115, Jangles and Jake Wilson. There you go. Thanks, Luke. There you go. Well, we're not done yet. That's the most expensive oh. cup of coffee you're ever gonna get out of me. Thank you. Mm. That's the that's the cash prize for winning the winning the long round. All right, guys. What an awesome day of fence building. The sun's setting here in beautiful Indiana, and this is where tomorrow is competition. We told you we'd take you there. It doesn't look as steep as it is, but it really is steep. Ryan's gonna run down the hill. Guys, thank you so much. <laughs> you can see how steep it is now. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit today. I hope you had fun watching the videos, and we'll see you in the next video. All right. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo!